I am now pleased to be joined by the radio color analyst for the Anaheim Ducks, Dan Wood. Dan, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well. I know right now the Anaheim Ducks are one of the hottest teams in the Western Conference here. Does the road to Cup Finals run through Anaheim in your mind, Dan? Well, I don't know about that. I think that might be overstating it a little bit. Uh, the Ducks obviously haven't had a lot of playoff success for quite a while now, so I think before we can talk like that, we have to see the Ducks at least win a playoff round. But certainly they uh, have shown an awful lot to this point in the season to suggest that they will be uh, a solid contender come playoff time, and we'll just have to wait and see how it uh, all plays out. No, most definitely. I know with this team right now, they've been led by Corey Perry, Ryan Getzlaff. Where would this team be without these two guys in the roster, Dan? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, last season when it appeared that uh, either or both of them might reach free agency and could conceivably leave Anaheim, uh, you know, it was certainly a, a big concern. And General Manager Bob Murray obviously got both of them signed to eight-year contract extensions. And I think if you look at their play this year, that's looking like a pretty brilliant move. So I would hate to think where they would be without Ryan Getzlaff and Corey Perry. Now, of course, same here. I know one thing with the Ducks, they're a very deep team, a very deep roster. How big is secondary scoring to you? Because you have Dustin Penner, you have Saku Koivu, you have Cal Paul Mary all contributing, and Andrew Cogliano contributing. It's huge. Uh, and it's something that I think the Ducks really haven't had uh, nearly as much of in recent years. In fact, I think the depth on this team right now is probably better than it's ever been in the 20-year history of the franchise. You know, not only with the forwards, uh, Bruce Boudreau likes to say that they have 14 forwards who are playing well, and obviously they can only play 12, and that doesn't even include people like Emerson Edom and Devontae smith Belly and Ricard Raquel, who are playing in Norfolk of the American League, and they're certainly capable of playing in the NHL as well. Uh, it's a similar situation on defense. It's a similar situation in goal. Uh, you know, depth is a great thing to have, and I think the Ducks are very fortunate in that regard. Oh, they re they really are. In the NHL, there's so much parity among its clubs. So to have a team like Anaheim in their game against Winnipeg, they went in with only nine regulation losses, and to be so far into this year and only have nine losses in regulation, what does that say about this team? Well, it's a pretty good team. Uh, you know, there's there's really no doubt about that. Uh, this club has progressed a great deal since Bruce Boudreau arrived here. Uh, you know, with what uh, the Ducks accomplished last season, finishing second in the Western Conference, leading the West, and in fact leading the NHL overall standings as we speak. Um, you know, it's it's a very good, solid hockey team. Having said that, uh, there are a lot of other good, solid hockey teams around. I mean, in this division, in this conference. It's going to be a dogfight going forward, but I think the Ducks, uh, at the very least, have to be considered, you know, a solid contender come playoff time. No, of course. And, and, and in, in the Pacific Division, in your mind, Dan, in the Pacific Division, who is the biggest threat to the Anaheim Ducks? Is it Vancouver? Is it L.A.? Is it a Fees Coyotes team? Well, I think it has to be the Kings simply because of what they have accomplished the past two postseasons. They won a Stanley Cup. They get to the Western Conference Finals last year and, uh, you know, arguably might have won that series against Chicago, if not for an awful lot of injuries. So the Kings are a team that I don't know uh, that the regular season is all that important to them. As long as they reach the playoffs, I think they feel like wherever they stand, whoever they play, they're going to have a great chance to win. And I think if you look at Anaheim or San Jose or Vancouver or anyone else, uh, any of those teams have to prove that they can beat the Kings before you know someone else in the Pacific Division can be anointed as the top team. Now, of course, it makes a lot of sense right there, Dan. Of course, Cam Fowler is a player that I've watched a lot. I've seen him grow from being a prospect to being an everyday NHLer. What has it been like, Dan, for you personally to watch him play every single game with the Ducks? Well, Cam has really raised the level of his play this season, and. Uh, you know, people tend to forget how young he is because he broke into the NHL immediately after being drafted. He had a real nice rookie year, and then, you know, the past couple of years, there were some struggles, which is not unusual for a young defenseman. That's an extremely difficult position to play, and, you know, Cam, by his own admission, uh, needed to learn some things. And he's done that. He's had the benefit of some tremendous 
coaching from Bob Woods, who handles the Ducks defense, from Scott Niedermeyer, who you know, helps out. And uh, Kim not only has become a good NHL player, but he's on the cusp of being considered one of the top two-way defensemen in the NHL. And he's only going to get better. So Sam Fowler, uh, his development has been one of the best things that has happened for the Ducks this season. Now, of course, you mentioned Scott Niedermeyer. How cool is to have Scott Niedermeyer on this team? Because I know he's a Hall of Famer. To have him as a part of this team coaching, how great is that to have an influence like him with this club still? It's really important. And Bruce Boudreaux would tell you that. You know, Scott Niedermeyer doesn't travel with the team regularly. He's not around all the time. Uh, but from the standpoint of Bob Murray, the general manager, and Bruce Boudreaux, head coach, they're just happy to get any contribution from Scott Niedermeyer that they can one of the most cerebral players in the history of the way he saw the game when he played, the anticipation that he had, his ability to teach his style of play, uh, especially with a team, with a lot of young defensemen. We can talk about Hank Lindholm and Sam Fox and Lucas Viva. Uh, I can't imagine too many guys that uh, I'd rather learn from if I were a young defenseman than Scott Niedermeyer. Now, of course, same here, same here if I played. <laughs> I know this team going through, going through a goal tank situation. I mean, Anaheim, there's a goal situation that most teams would definitely kill to have. You have Jonas Hiller, you have Frederick Anderson, you have Victor Foss, three great goalies. And the rumor is that at the end of the season, Hiller may be gone. How important is it for Anaheim to make sure he is back in California? Well, first of all, I don't think Jonas Hiller will be going anywhere this season. Bob Ray has gone on record saying that there's no way that he's going to trade Jonas Hiller. Where the Ducks are in the standings is supposed to be the move. You know, you want to have a proven veteran goaltender in the postseason. So we'll see what happens. This situation this year is very similar to where the Ducks were in 2007. At that point, John Sebastian Figuer was a pending unrestricted free agent. The Ducks did not sign him during the season, and uh, they let things play out. They wound up winning the Stanley Cup, and James earned himself a nice, bad new contract. Uh, you know, I think Jonas Hiller has the opportunity to do that. If he goes into the playoffs and plays great and the Ducks have success, I think there's every reason to think that the Ducks will resign him. If things don't work out that way, conceivably the decision could be made to let Jonas Hiller walk away as a free agent. You mentioned Victor Foss and uh, Frederick Anderson. And let's also mention John Gibson, who is Norfolk of the American League and is generally considered, if not the top, certainly one of the top goal prospects outside the NHL right now. So the Ducks do have uh, a lot of options going forward in goal. And whether Jonas Hiller will be here next year, I don't think any part of the answer to that question right now. That's very true, that's very true, Dan. It's been a blast talking to you. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. I would love to. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, Dan.